In this Blender quick start guide, I will show you the very basics of how to use the Blender 3D software for absolute beginners. So if you've never used Blender before, this is the video for you. Now if you want to get a good understanding of the basic fundamentals of Blender, then I highly recommend checking out my Blender Complete Beginner tutorial series where I show you much more in depth the entire basic fundamentals of Blender. But if you're completely new to 3D modeling and 3D art, and you want just a very quick video to just get you started with the very basics, then this video is for you. So when you first open up the Blender 3D software, you're going to see this screen here, and there's a splash screen with an artwork, but you can just click on the splash screen to get rid of it. Now right down here in the corner of my screen, I'm going to have screencast keys, so when I click a button or use my mouse, you can see what button I'm pressing. Now real quick before I show you the 3D modeling basics, I'm going to click here on edit, and I'm going to go to the preferences. I'll just click here and drag the window over, and I'm going to click here on interface, and then I'm going to take this resolution scale and just drag it up, just so it's easier for you to see here on YouTube. But this is totally optional, you don't have to do this, I'm just turning this up so that every everything's a bit bigger and easier to see. So now I'll just click on the exit here to get rid of the user preferences. So first I'll show you how to move around in the 3D view. So if you click and hold down with the middle mouse wheel, this is going to orbit. So you can see there is a cube here, we call this the default cube, because it's the default cube added to Blender. Now if you want to zoom in or zoom out, you can just scroll with the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in or to zoom out. Now there's a really useful tool right up here and this is called the gizmo. So there's this zooming button right here and if I just left click and drag on the zooming button then you can drag back and forth and you can zoom in and out and then if you want to orbit around instead of clicking with the middle mouse wheel you can just click right here in the circle and you can drag around. Now if I zoom out here let's say that I want to move over to another side to look at something else in my 3D view. Well you can pan over by holding down the shift key and then clicking down with the middle mouse wheel and moving back and forth. What you can also do is click on the hand icon and click and drag, and that is going to pan around. Now on default, there are three basic objects. There is a cube object, and so this is a mesh object, which will actually show up in the render. Then there is a lamp here, and this is actually going to light the 3D scene. And then this is the camera, and the camera is where it's actually going to render from, so basically what view you're gonna actually render your 3D scene. Now to select objects, you can just left click on each different object. And if you want to select multiple objects, you can hold down the shift key and you can select multiple objects at once. So now what if I want to move these objects? Well, I can select this cube here by just left clicking, and then you can use these tools right up here in this corner. So on default, we have this select box, and so if I just left click and drag, that is going to add a box, and then when I let go, everything inside the box is going to select. And you can also hit the A key if you want to select all the objects, and then double tap the A key if you want to deselect all the objects. So now back to moving objects, if I just select this object, I can click right here to the move tool. So if I click on the move tool, let me zoom in here, now there's going to be these three arrows, and so I can click and drag on the arrows, and that is going to move the cube around. Now why the arrows are red, green, and blue is because of these axes here. So in Blender we call this red one the x-axis, we call the green one the y-axis, and we call the one going up and down, the blue one, the z-axis. Now there's a shortcut key if you want to use it, and that is the G key. So you can remember G for grab. So you're grabbing the objects, and then they're going to follow your mouse. Now you can also rotate the objects by clicking on this button here, and then you can click and drag the circles. So you can rotate it on the x-axis, you can rotate it on the y-axis, or you can rotate it along the z-axis. And then if you just click on the big white circle, that's going to rotate it from the direction of your view. Now if you want to use the shortcut, you can hit the R key, and that's going to rotate it. So remember R for rotate, you can move it over and then just left click to place it. Now to scale objects, you can use the scale tool. And so again, you can scale it on the Z axis, you can scale it on the Y axis, and also the X axis. And then the shortcut key is easy to remember. You can hit the S key because S stands for scale. Now there's also this really useful tool here. So if I click on this, you can move the object, you can rotate the object, and you can also scale the object all at once. So now let's do some very basic 3D modeling and model a 
very basic snowman. So what I first want to do is delete all the objects so we can start fresh. So remember, if you hit the A key, that's going to select everything. You can also click and drag to use the box select to select everything. And to delete it, we can just hit delete. So now we want to add some new objects. So to add new objects, you can click here on the add menu. And there's going to be a bunch of objects, but don't worry about this. Most of these things you won't really use. The main things you're going to use are the mesh objects. You can see there's the cube. And then also you can use the light objects to light your scene. And then finally, you can add a camera to actually tell Blender where you want it to render. Let's first go up here to mesh and I'm gonna model a very basic snowman. So we're gonna add this UV sphere here and that's gonna be the base for the snowman. So then if we wanna zoom into the sphere again, you can hold down the shift key and you can click down with the middle mouse wheel. You can also click on this button to pan around and then to zoom, you can scroll with your mouse wheel or you can click and drag here with that little plus magnifying glass. Now, a really easy way to zoom into the active object, meaning the object which is selected, is you can press the period key on the numpad. So now we have zoomed into that object. And another way to do this, if you don't wanna use the shortcut, is to click on view and then frame selected. And that will jump to the object. Now you can see that the sphere doesn't look smooth, it looks really sharp, and it has all these little squares here. This is because of the shading mode. So if you right click, this will bring up the object context menu, and you can see there is shade smooth, shade auto smooth, and shade flat. So this is the one we're currently using, which is shade flat. So it's going to keep the geometry of the mesh really flat. However, I can right click and click on shade smooth. And now that looks a lot better. It looks like the snowball of a snowman. Now, what if I want to make three of them? Well, instead of clicking here on add, going to mesh and adding a UV sphere, I can duplicate the object. So you can press shift D. Shift D is the shortcut key to duplicate an object. And so now we have another one and you can see it's following our mouse. So now let's just bring it up here, stick it here. And then remember the shortcut key, you can hit S to scale and I'll just make it a bit smaller. And then I will hit G to grab and stick it right up here. Let's pan by holding down the shift key and clicking with our middle mouse wheel and just move up. And then again, we'll do that one more time. So shift D to duplicate, bring it up here. We will hit S to scale and then click to confirm. And then if I go here to the side, I can just move it over and just bring it down. And I will double tap the A key to deselect everything. And there's the basic snowman. Now let's model a basic top hat for our snowman. So again, you can click here on the add menu, or if you want to, you can use the shortcut key of shift A. So I will hit shift A and that's gonna bring up the same exact menu. So I'll go to mesh and let's add a cylinder for the top hat. And then I can move the cylinder up here and then we can scale it down. So I'll hit S and we'll just make it a bit smaller like that. And then let's maybe click here on this arrow and move it up a bit. Now, if I zoom in here by scrolling my mouse wheel, you can see we're having the same problem where there's these jagged faces. So if I just right click, right now we're using shade flat. If I right click and choose shade smooth, it looks smooth. But the problem is right here where the top part is, it looks really smooth and that looks a bit weird. So if I right click, I can use shade auto smooth. This way you can see the edges will be smooth and the top will be smooth. But this sharp edge right here is going to look flat. And then I want to make the rim of the top hat. So again, you can hit shift D to duplicate. Let's bring it up here. And then I can scale it by clicking here on the blue square. And I'll just make it a bit smaller, make it really thin. And then you can also hit S to scale the entire thing up. Let's maybe make it a bit thicker. Hit S again to scale it down. And I can just bring it right down here. Now let's say we want to rotate the top hat going back a little bit. So to select both objects at once, remember you can hold down the shift key and then just left click to select an object. And now you can see they're both selected. So now if I just click here on the green circle and rotate it, I can rotate both of them and I can move them over and there's the basic top hat. So now let's make the face of the snowman. So I'm just going to left click to select the face. And then again, you can hit the period to zoom in to the snowman's head. You can also do this by clicking on view and then frame selected. So now let's go to the add menu again. So if you want to, you can click on add here or you can use the shortcut of shift A and let's go to mesh. And I thought it would be cool to add an icosphere. Let's move it up here by clicking here and dragging. Let's also click on this arrow and drag it out. And then I'll hit S to scale and we'll make it smaller. So you can see the icosphere is a sphere, but it kind of has these triangle faces. 
So let's click on the triangle there or the arrow and drag it back, move it up here, or you can hit G. Remember G is for grab and we'll stick it here and then S to scale and let's duplicate it. So again, the shortcut key is shift D to duplicate and I can just click there. So just left click to place it and maybe I'll move it back a little bit. I could also scale it a little bit. So one of them is bigger than the other to kind of make it look stylized. Let's add a carrot nose. So again, shift A or click up there on the add menu. We'll go to mesh and I'm going to add a cone. Let's zoom out here. We will bring the cone up. Let's navigate here to the side by clicking and dragging with your middle mouse wheel. Let's bring it over and then I want to scale it up so it's longer. So you can click here and drag this out to scale it up. Now you can see again, if I zoom into it, you can see there's those sharp faces. So we will right click and we're going to use the shade auto smooth and then I can rotate it. So we'll just rotate that over or hit the R key to rotate. We'll click there and then we're just going to scale it way down and then let's move it back here and then we'll also move it up here. So this is really good practice if you're very new to Blender, just moving objects around and scaling objects. Once you get better at Blender, this will be very easy to do, but when you're just starting out, this is good practice. Let's also make some basic arms. So again, I will go to the add menu with shift A or just click on the add menu up here. We'll go to mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder. Again, let's just right click and we're gonna do the shade auto smooth. And since the cylinder was selected, you can see now those faces there are smoothed out. So we'll click here on the red circle and we'll just rotate that over just like that. And then I can scale it. So we'll click here on the green square and we're just gonna scale that up and then hit S to scale and we'll scale the entire thing way down. And then again, scale it up again here like that and scale it way down. And then we can move it up by using the blue triangle or the blue arrow. We scale the entire thing down again. And then we can again click here and just scale that out. So we're done with our modeling. So I want to do lighting and materials. So we need to light the 3D scene. And then we also need to add some colors to the objects. Now, right now we are in what's called solid view. And how I know I'm in solid view is because if I look right up here, you can see that there is these little circles here. So this one is solid view, but if I want to go into the rendered view to see what it's actually going to look like when it renders, I can click on this little button here. So this one here, you can see if I hover over it, it says viewport shading rendered. So I'll click on this one. And so now you can see everything looks really gray, but that's because we haven't added any lights to the scene. So to add lights, you can go to the add menu and let's go down here to light and let's add the area light. There's a few different lights, but I'll choose the area light. Now with the area light, I can move it around just like a normal object. So I'm going to hit G for grab and I'm going to move it up here and let's hit S to scale and I'm going to bring it out. Now what you can also do is you can click right here and then drag and you can pull it out to make it larger. And then of course you can use the gizmo here so you can use the rotate tool to rotate it over. But I'm going to just like navigate up here so I'm looking down and then I'm going to hit R and just rotate that over. So wherever the line is that's where the area light is going to be pointing. Now it's not very bright right now so what I can do is I can go over here to this side panel and this has some different options. What we want to do is just click here on the light bulb and that is going to go to the light settings. So there's a few different settings. There's a color and a power. So if I click and drag and drag back and forth on the power, I can make it a bigger number. So I'm just going to drag this really big, maybe to like 700 or 800, something like that. And now you can see that it's actually lighting the object. And as I move this around, the lighting is going to change. Now I can also change the color. So if I click on this little white option here, you can see it's going to give us a color wheel so I can make it lighter and darker. I can change the color if I want to, but I'm just going to leave it as this white color. So now let's add some colors or materials to our objects. So I'm going to zoom in here and what I'll do is just left click here to select that object, the head object, and to add materials, let's just click here and drag this up so we have more space. So just drag this properties panel bigger. So to add materials, we can click on this little red circle. And this is gonna to go to the materials so we can add colors or materials to the objects. So we're gonna click on new, and this is going to add a material to this object. Now it didn't really look like anything changed, but that's because on default, all the objects have a white color. So now you can see there is a material name and I can click here and I can type in snow and then hit enter. So now it's called snow. And then here on the base color, I can change this to whatever color I want, but I'm gonna leave it as white for snow. And I can also turn this up here to make it really bright. 
Now I will click on the next object, and to add the same exact color, we can click on this little drop down here. And this is going to show us all of the colors or materials in our scene. So I'm going to choose snow, and then we'll click on the last one, and then we're going to click on the drop down, and we'll choose snow. So let's add some more materials. So let's make a black material for the hat. So I will select the hat by left clicking. Let's click on new. And this material here, just to rename it so it's easy to remember what it is, I will type in hat. Now I will click on the base color here, and I'm just going to drag this here all the way down so it is black. Now another cool thing you can do with this material is you can make it look more shiny to maybe make it look like a shiny plastic or just a shiny top hat. So you can see there is this roughness, and if I turn this up and down, you can see it looks more reflective, so it looks like a really shiny plastic. So I'm going to drag this roughness down so it's now a bit more shiny. Now let's select this object here. We will click on the drop down and let's choose the hat material. So now let's click on the eyes. And since the eyes are also going to be black, let's click on the drop down and choose the hat and click on the last icosphere for the eye and click on the drop down and choose the hat. So now let's click on the nose here. We'll click on new and I can click here to rename it and I can call it carrot or nose. And then here on the base color, let's click here and I'll drag this over towards the orange. So now we have an orange nose. Now let's click here on the arms. I can click on new. I'll click to rename this and I can call it arms. And here in the base color to make it brown, I will first drag the color wheel till it's orange and then I'll drag the color wheel down. So now it looks brown. Now if I zoom in here, you can see there are some reflections. So if I click on the roughness and drag this roughness value here and drag it up towards one, now it's going to be more rough. And so that looks better for a stick or a branch, which would be used for the snowman. Now it's a really good idea to save your project. So for some reason, if Blender crashes, we won't lose our progress. So let's click here on file and we can click here on save. So this will bring up a file browser in Blender and you can locate to some folder on your computer. And then if you click here, here to rename it, I can call it snowman, hit enter, and then I can click on save Blender file. And then of course, before you close Blender, click on file and click on save again to save the file. So now we want to add a camera because if we don't add a camera, Blender won't know what view to render it as. So we'll go to the add menu, click here and we will add a camera. Now to move the camera, of course, you can move it just like any object, but it's more useful to go inside the camera so we can see what the camera is seeing. So if you hit the zero on the numpad, that's gonna go into the camera view, but an easier way to remember this is to just click on this little camera button, and now we're gonna be inside the camera's view. Now I wanna move the camera, and a really easy way to move the camera is to click on the lock button once you are inside the camera. So if I click on lock, now if I scroll out, or if I pan around, or if I zoom, you can see the camera is gonna follow our view. So this makes it really easy to just place the camera. So just click down with your middle mouse wheel to orbit. So just move to somewhere where you want. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit. So now to render the final image, we can click here on render, and you can click on render image, and this will open up a new window in Blender, and there is our finished image, so I can zoom into it. I can also click with my middle mouse wheel to move around. Now to save this as a file on my computer, I can click on image, and I can click on save as. And this is going to again open up a new window and I can go somewhere on my computer like maybe my desktop and I can click here to rename this and I can call this snowman and you can see it's going to save as a PNG file. If you want to save it as a different file, you can choose the different files here, but I'll save it as PNG and I'll click on save as image. Let's just click on the X button here to get rid of this. Now if you want to get out of your camera view, again, you can click on the lock icon so it's unlocked. Or you can also just click on the camera icon there and that's going to go out of the camera view. So that's going to wrap it up for this Blender quick start guide for absolute beginners. Now, if this is your very first time learning about Blender, there's so many more things you can learn and so many more basic fundamentals you can learn to get better at Blender. So if you want to learn more about Blender, then I highly recommend checking out my Blender complete beginner tutorial series. So in that tutorial series, I cover all the basic fundamentals of Blender and I go into so much more detail in that tutorial series. So you can check it out on my YouTube channel. It's completely free and I'll have the link in the video description. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.